All right, guys. So I'm going to get started. I wish I could keep up with the chat. Um, I don't have those skills yet. Um, I will. I will. As you can see, my my absolute amazing mentor, Pace Morby, if you are on live calls with him, you know he is constantly reading the chat and he is constantly able to respond to that. I am uh, not at that level yet, but I promise you I will work towards it. So with all that being said, let's get into the training. Um, so honestly, I, I really want to start this off just with like a massive thank you for you being here. Like um, this is, you know, for those who I talk to in person, um, you know, I like to talk a lot and I talk fast. Um, I'm going to try to slow it down, but I, I do want to, I just really do want to share like my massive appreciation for you being here. Honestly, if you weren't here, um, it'd be pretty awkward because I'd be sitting here just talking to myself, wasting time. So I'm glad that I'm not doing that. But like, seriously, I do appreciate your commitment um, to wanting to improve your financial life. I know a lot of you are in the same communities as myself. You're in Owner's Club and Sub 2, especially Sub 2 with Pace Morby. Um, so I already know you're committed to your financial freedom and we've connected in various ways because of that. But um, if you are not in Sub 2, as my mentor Pace has taught me, please use the link below. I could even drop it in the chat. If you are not in Sub 2, please use this link to join Sub 2. Please, I highly recommend it. A lot of this is very helpful if you are part of sub two, if you're not part of sub two, it's a lot more challenging because the main strategies I implement now are buying properties that are creatively financed and raising capital. And the majority of those people, like my partners and lenders that want to partner on creative finance deals are part of the sub two community. So if you're not in sub two and you don't have the money for it, I would wait until you do. This is very valuable for you, but I would wait to try to save the money to join sub two. But if, if you are Part of sub two, you're going to be at a massive advantage to someone that is not. I, I want to make this as inclusive as possible, but I can only share with you what's been working for me. And being a part of sub two and has been a massive part of it. So once again, I want to appreciate you guys so much for being here. I know you're committed to your financial freedom. And I know that for a lot of us, financial freedom is not just about um, just adding a bunch of money, adding a bunch of zeros and dollar signs. Like, yes we want money right we want money we want a lot of money if possible especially passive income if possible but it's not just about having money as a scorecard it's about what it's about what that passive income can do for you it's about having so much passive income that you can work when you're truly passionate like so you can work on what you're truly passionate about and what provides you purpose i know unfortunately a lot of the world a lot of our country is stuck in the rat race. And, you know, I just quite literally just quit my job a few months ago. And I think that's a terrible position to be in forever, right? Not right away. You got, you got to do your work. You got to make your money, make ends meet. But the idea of exchanging your time for money forever and your whole life is gone. Uh, I'm not a fan of that. The thing is that not only do we want to be financially free, the people in this room, we know that everyone wants to be financially free, but we also know that at the same time, not everyone is willing to put in the work that's required to invest in themselves to actually achieve financial freedom. Obviously you are right. You're here. You're here on a Thursday night, right? With uh, 70, let's say almost 80 other people. There's going to be dozens of others, if not hundreds of others that watch this recording. So you're here on a Thursday night where you could be watching TV. I know the Ravens are playing football tonight. Um, I think it's the Bengals. You could be grabbing drinks with friends. You could really be doing anything else besides being here. So when I say I'm appreciative that you're here tonight, I like seriously mean it. With that being said, let's get into the Financial Freedom Masterclass. This is a four-part series throughout the month of November. I have this one focused on financial freedom, and I have three more coming up throughout this month. And um, I'll, I'll share all the information about that um, coming up. And over these next four trainings, or these four master classes, we'll say, I'm going to show you how anyone can go from $0 to $20,000 a month of passive income through real estate. But this one, I want to hit the main, the main message home with this one with financial freedom, because doing all these steps, doing all the things that's required, the work that's required, investing in yourself, investing your time, investing your money, all of that that you have to do. Uh, being open to having a slightly higher risk tolerance than the normal person, giving up certain uh, time 
uh, that you could be, you know, sitting there watching TV or Netflix or whatever. If you don't have a clear why, if you don't understand why you're doing, why you're pursuing financial freedom, even if it's not perfect, because honestly, I didn't have a very clear why. I just knew that I was going to be financially free because I wanted to control my time and not be dependent on someone else for my income. But having a clear why really helps make this process so much easier for you. So that's why the foundational one, this one is primarily just focused on financial freedom. We're going to talk a lot about real estate, but it's really financial freedom focused and how it intertwines with everything. So in this four part series, as I mentioned, we're going to go, we're going to, I'm going to show you specifically how I went and how you can also go from no cash flow at all to 20 plus thousand dollars a month of passive income through real estate. And right, if you own real estate and if you understand the benefits of real estate, cash flow is one of those benefits. You also have debt paid on each month. Your tenants are paying down your debts. Your properties are appreciating in value. And I do not pay any taxes. Thankfully, real estate is this weird asset class where we get the advantage of not having to pay any taxes, depending on you know how you structure your investments. Although I own around $20 million of real estate, that's where I'm at now. So I have right around $20 million of real estate. It's roughly 60 properties. You might be shocked to find out that I am not passionate about houses. Honestly, if, if we've ever had a candid discussion, I've probably already told you that I don't even really like houses. Like I, I don't like, I don't like care for houses. Like it, it's whatever to me. Some people are very passionate about houses. I was with my friend, Justin Tumanowski at his uh, most recent investment property. And he was exceptionally passionate about the property they bought. He, that was his thing for me. I'm not passionate about them. I don't like houses. I do like providing high quality housing to my tenants. I do like working with my partners and friends to solve problems for sellers when they're in a pickle. But most importantly, the reason why I've leveraged real estate is because I'm passionate about the financial freedom that rental properties have provided me. I'm passionate about having time freedom so that I can do whatever I want, whenever I want. I'm passionate about having complete control of my schedule so I can do whatever I want, whenever I want, without having to ask a boss or someone else for permission. I'm passionate about being able to choose if I'll work and if so, what I'm gonna be working on, when I'll be working and from where, which for me usually means at the comfort of my home right next to my wife and baby, or um, while we're digitally nomading it, just hanging out and traveling and getting some work done in the meanwhile. I am passionate about spending quality time with my baby girl and my beautiful wife they're alongside me every single day. I am passionate about being able to take my baby to the Monterey Bay Aquarium on a random Tuesday and then being able to upgrade our tickets to the annual mem membership and then going to be able to eat some great clam chowder and oysters right after without having to worry about price, without having to compete with every single other person because we're going on a Tuesday instead of a Saturday or Sunday where everyone else is available. I am very passionate about not having to ask a supervisor for time off I am very passionate about being able to take more than two weeks of vacation a year and not having to ask for permission. I am passionate about being able to spend the last two weeks traveling to five different states, including going to uh, the New England Patriots game, hitting up Salem and Boston for Halloween, hanging out with my incredible sub two and owners club family, where we were bouncing around from the owners club little mastermind that we had to several different meetups what was it? Five different meetups. Uh, we were going to different meetups, eating out phenomenal restaurants. We set up some incredible Airbnbs. Um, those are things that I'm passionate about. What I'm also passionate about, oh, let's get back. What I'm also passionate about was being able to say absolutely yes when the one and only Pace Morby invites me to an exclusive dinner at the Plaza Hotel right off Central Park, Manhattan. And then we spent the whole night afterwards hitting up a ton of attractions sightseeing this was on election night and then grabbing some delicious pizza before i headed uh back back to sleep all right so enough about me before we really get started if you know anything about me you know that i like to talk and sometimes i like to talk very fast and sometimes my passion comes off a little aggressive i just learned that um although i've been born and raised in california uh <laughs> i very much fit in with the uh, northeast especially the new york uh talking cadence, which is fast and a uh, direct, but, um, so, but with that being said, even though I do talk that way, I also do like to pause and have you do some work. So for our first exercise, 
What I want you to do is write down at least three key things that you're passionate about doing if you were financially free. So please just take a moment and post some of the uh, post in the comments, write down physically. And it doesn't have to be the perfect answer, right? Like when I started my past, my journey to financial freedom, it was not this clearly defined why. There was those things that I mentioned, but it wasn't this clearly defined why. So what are some of the things that um, that you're absolutely passionate about? What are the things that if you... If you were financially free and you no longer no longer had to worry about, you know, time, like someone ha- allowing you permission or finances being an issue, what are those things that you'd be focusing your time on? I know some people absolutely love golf and tennis and this and that. For me, like I mentioned, traveling, eating great food, having great, amazing experiences, and most importantly, spending quality time with my wife and baby every single day. Those are things that matter to me a ton. So hanging out with kids. Yep. Perfect. Spending time with family, volunteering, helping others travel, travel, scuba diving in exotic locations. That's awesome. Mike, that is awesome. Traveling with wife and kids, volunteering and travel. It seems like we're a little bit more in line than we, than we think, but travel, providing, giving mission and family vacation, snowboarding. Absolutely. I mean, I love this. I love this. And as you can tell the people who come to my stuff, the, you know, all of you in here, we are very much uh, in alignment. I, I have attracted the right tribe of people and I'm just so thankful that you guys are here. So seriously, thank you. If, if you haven't already, please make sure to do this exercise. I know it's hard. I have a hard time just sitting there and not trying to work. Um, what I need to do more of sometimes is just sit there and not work and think and reflect. And so I know that's hard for a lot of people, especially if you're more like analytical and engineering minded like myself you are an overthinker per se, because you think you need the perfect answer. It's if you have that concern, usually when you close your eyes and the first thing you think about is typically what that answer is. What then we tend to do is then we overthink that answer when really that first answer that comes to mind, that might be one of the things you truly are passionate about, whether you want to believe it or not. Yeah, I love these answers. This is phenomenal. You guys are awesome people. Seriously, this is great. All right. So as I mentioned, even though we all want financial freedom, I think everyone you've you'll ever ask in this entire country, in this entire world, wants to be financially free. They want to have control of their time and they don't want money to ever be a limiting factor for them. But we're all individuals and we all have different passions and desires. So although financial freedom is universal, the reason why you want to be financially free is unique and could be and is different than why I want to be financially free. But I did read this insane stat today. The average retirement age in the United States is 66 years old. The average lifespan is 78 years old. So what you're telling me is that we're in school for around 20 years of our life. Some, you know, tw- I think I was, I was in until 22, 23 years old I did engineering. So it took an extra year, but then you spend the next 46 years of your life battling through traffic, locked up in some cubicle, and maybe you get two weeks off a year to enjoy life. I saw a lot of you love to travel. I don't think two weeks a year for the next 46 years is what you're referring to. And regardless of your age, honestly, this is what I like to remind myself. I'm fortunate and I'm grateful that I started my journey so early and I'm retired at such a young age. But the, the, there's like one, one thing that will always happen. Time will always move. So regardless of your age, two years from now is going to be two years from now. And you truly decide what you want your life to look like in two years from now. And when I show you my timeline and my journey and how much I've been able to do in such a short amount of time, I hope that's something that's inspiring, not something that you compare to and beat yourself up about or wish you did things differently. Like at this point, it is what it is. You know, they say is you can't, the best time to plant a tree was yesterday. The second best time is today. You cannot go back. You cannot change anything. But what you can do is take control and change the future and make it whatever you want. All right. So for the next 46 years, right? That's insane. So once you're 66 years old, after all that, you've worked your entire life so hard, you get maybe roughly 12 years on average of your life to actually be free, to then financially be able to have time freedom. Uh, As we all know, there's a major crisis in this country. Even if you might have time freedom, you probably will not have financial freedom. You'd be lucky if maybe you have social security to make ends meet and you're not uh, struggling financially, but you probably won't have the money that you wanted if you go the traditional route. As we know, people spend a lot more money than they should. They don't invest the way they should. 
And at that point, yeah, you're time free. You're physically not there anymore. You're mentally probably degraded at that point. You know, I'm not, gen I'm just generalizing, right? If you're that age, I'm sorry. I don't mean that in a rude way, but I don't think you want to work for 66 years of your life through school and work to then have 12 years of your life where now you're time free, but you're not financially free. And to hit the point home for you, I have a little poem called the American nightmare. Um, this is uh, frightening to me. This is always something that's been frightening to me. You wake up, you hit snooze four times, you stare at your phone, you roll out of bed, make coffee, sit in traffic, eight hours of unfulfilling work, then you sit in traffic again, dinner. If you have kids, take your, get your kids to bed. If you have pets, you walk your pet. Maybe you watch a little TV to uh, relax, maybe a glass of wine, you pass out, and then you repeat that for 46 years. There are highs and lows and things that come about, but having that as a routine part of your life, hell no. For me, hell no. That is not the American dream. That really is the American nightmare. But unfortunately, that is what is being sold to 99% of people. The problem is, I didn't even mention, as someone who went to college and did pay off my student debts, a lot of people before that are going to school, getting into massive student debt, and then never able to even come out of that first and foremost. And like I said, the idea of a life like this has always scared the crap out of me. That is why I always knew I would be financially free early. I didn't have a big why as, as to what I would be doing with my time, but I knew I would not regret being financially free and being able to control my day. I will admit that when I started this journey, I didn't think I'd do it before I turned 30 years old, but like, here we are. So, you know, all right. So let me share you and let me share with you another passion of mine. I am extremely passionate about helping other people achieve financial freedom and escape the nightmare. And it honestly, we can get rid of achieve everything after that. I am extremely passionate about helping people. I did this um, when I was, when I want my first profession that I wanted to do was be a doctor because I really wanted to help save lives. And then I pivoted to engineering because I wanted to help solve problems that would help humanity. And then I started an environmentally focused company because I wanted to help reduce plastic pollution in our country and make sure that we have less plastic uh, affecting our wildlife, our ecosystem, and that we had less plastic being consumed as humans because we don't even know what the harmful effects of all that will be. And then I did this when even though I was a chemical engineer and I should have worked as an oil and gas in the oil and gas industry as a petroleum engineer, I instead took a pay cut, basically cut my pay in half to serve our country as an environmental science and engineering officer where I got out as a um, army captain. And then I continue to do that now in my main vehicle of doing so, which is real estate investing. Uh, I've helped probably the majority of you in some way or some capacity with your real estate investing journey. And my main focus now is not just real estate. I don't actually care what the asset class is. Real estate is the asset class of choice because it is scalable. It's obviously possible because I did it. And you can leverage other people's money, including the banks and capital partners that that so that you can all win together. So that's my thing, right? Right now, my main focus is helping other people achieve financial freedom and escaping that American nightmare that I just shared. Like I said, I already know you're committed to being financially free. You would not be here if you weren't. But I think the one of the big problems is you are probably working extremely hard. I actually think the majority of you work harder than I do. And it's not that I didn't work hard for a very long time, but at this point, I only need to work two to four hours a week or two to four hours a day. I wish a week, two to four hours a day, right around 10 to 20 hours a week to continue to buy real estate, raise money, and then handle the overall operations. Could I work more and scale my portfolio faster? Sure. But I am very passionate about my work-life balance. As I highlighted uh, like 50 million times, I have a brand new six-month-old baby girl. I love spending time with my wife. I love to take leisurely strolls with her in our nice neighborhood. I love to be able to eat meals together. I love to be uh, present and with my baby during all of her awake windows. So I could work more, but I choose not to because I'm financially free. That's the goal. I will say though, you're probably working really hard, but maybe not on the right things. And I don't know that, right? I'm just, I'm just guessing. One of the biggest problems I see is that most investors think they need to wholesale 
and or fix and flip, right? Maybe start with wholesale, then fix and flip before you can buy and hold properties. Why do they think that? I don't know. I don't know if there's just some unwritten rule. If you read the wrong Bigger Pockets book, or I don't know what got you down that path, but I know that this is like true. I don't know if, I mean, I see it in the comments, so I definitely know this is a thing that, that people think is, I, I don't know why that is the path that's been pushed on people. I think one major reason, right? I think one of the reasons, I don't have the answer for this, is that I think people know they need to do real estate but they honestly think the slog of wholesaling or the risk associated with fix and flipping is much easier than buying, hold, buying and holding properties. I'm not saying wholesaling doesn't work. I'm not saying fix and flipping doesn't work. I, but what I am saying is it's not the best path to financial freedom. Not at all. If your goal is financial freedom, which comes from passive income, right? You have passive income coming in each, each month that covers all of your expenses then you need you need passive income to be financially free. What wholesaling and fix and flipping are, they are active income. They're phenomenal ways to get large chunks of money, but that's a job. You can't you can't necessarily stop working in those businesses and they continue to grow for you. Fix and flipping and wholesaling are great for today money, but buy and hold and buy and hold rentals get you that passive money forever and I know that's exactly what you want and that's exactly what I did. So just a real highlight on my journey. When I started investing, the first thing I ever did was buy and hold real estate. I'm not saying that I magically just said, I'm going to buy and hold real estate and it happened. I started learning about real estate investing in 2018. Uh, that's when I actually uh, joined the military, the, the army. I had plenty of time to be able to uh, read, listen to podcasts. I was reading tons of books from Bigger Pockets. Um, I was learning about real estate investing, all the benefits of real estate investing. And at that point, 2018, I got stationed up in Fairbanks, Alaska in 2019. And I knew that I would need to buy and hold real estate, especially because I was living in a duplex, a two unit property where I was renting one side, like the landlord owned this two unit property. I was here and my neighbor was right there. We shared an adjacent wall. Actually, it was a top down duplex. I've lived in side by side. This was a top down duplex. I lived upstairs and they lived downstairs, unfortunately for them. Um, so in 2019, I spent a ton of time analyzing real estate investment deals. I knew that I, since I was living in a two unit property, I knew why couldn't I be the one to buy a property like this and still live in one side and rent out the other, also known as house hacking a property, house hacking a small multifamily property. Throughout 2019 and early 2020, I spent an incredible amount of time analyzing every single small multifamily property, every single two to four unit property that hit the market so that my wife and I could buy a property. I had dozens that seemed like they'd be great investments. However, I wasn't quite ready mentally or whatever to actually buy those investments. I wasn't making offers, which you will not buy property without making offers. It sounds funny and like, oh, that's amazing in hindsight, like to say that or like, like, oh yeah, it's so obvious, but it didn't feel very obvious. It felt like I was doing a lot of work and I was, I was becoming a freaking expert deal analyzer. But then when, I, especially when I went to my first real estate investment association, um, a local uh, like real estate group in Fairbanks, Alaska, I realized I would compare my notes with others there. I would say, hey, did you see this property? What did you think about it? And I would compare and I, I realized, dang, I'm underwriting better than these guys. I thought, damn, I'm like a master deal analyzer. That's great. But in March of 2020, I realized that's all I was. I was someone who truly just knew how to analyze real estate investments. And that was basically it. I didn't own a single property up to that point, but I spent tons and tons of time analyzing investments, time I could have spent doing other things. And what I had to do was give myself an ultimatum at that point. So this was March of 2020. This was right before COVID was announced, like in, in the US before it became a huge issue and we had our lockdowns. And I told myself that the very next property that hit my criteria as a great investment to buy, if I did not make an offer on that, then I would never pursue real estate investing again. It just made no sense at all for me to keep analyzing investments to not buy real estate. I was not going to be financially free by analyzing investments. I was only going to be financially free by buying and holding properties. So that's exactly what happened. The a duplex hit the market. Um, the whole world was slowing down and stopping. Well, I found this phenomenal property. It hit my buying criteria. 
and my wife and I, within two months, purchased our very first duplex. This was a property that I leveraged my VA loan as a as an active duty service member at the time. I had the VA loan, so I used the zero zero percent down VA loan to then be able to buy that property. I lived in one side. My wife and I actually I lived we lived in the bottom, and my wife and I renovated the upstairs, and within five days had it rented out to another service member who was covering our entire freaking mortgage. So we were living rent free and we bought this property using none of our own money. And every single month they were paying our mortgage and paying down our debts. The plan was that when we moved out of that property and we rented ours out, we'd be making over $1,000 a month of cash flow. That is 1,000 extra dollars a month that to cover anything in our life. That was, that was more than our grocery bill that covered our internet, our utilities. I mean, this $1,000 a month, people focus on $20,000, $100,000. How amazing would it be to have an extra $1,000 a month of cash flow just coming in every single month? Money that no matter what you do, I mean, obviously you got to manage your properties and all that, but as long as you're effectively managing your properties on the first of the month, every month, you get an additional $1,000 coming in, hitting your bank that you can, you can do whatever you want with. And then on the 15th of the month, I pay my debts, like my mortgages at the latest that you can. But on the 15th of the month, then we would take the rental income that was coming from our tenant, pay down the debt. So my tenants are now paying down my debt, adding to my net worth. My properties as a buy and hold investor continue to appreciate in value, increases in value, adding to my net worth. And one of my favorite parts, although I was making $1,000 a month, my tenants were paying down my debt and my properties were appreciating in value. I was also saving on taxes. Then... I started learning more about real estate investing and learn about wholesaling, right? Finding investment opportunities, putting them under contract and then selling them to other investors. I did it a little bit differently. The way I did it was something called bird dogging where I would actually, instead of looking for sellers and deals first, I would talk to buyers and then look for the exact types of deals that they were looking for and then go find that for them. Talking to sellers, talking to agents, structuring those deals at the terms that the buyer would want and then selling that contract to, to um, buyers. And that was a phenomenal way for me to like develop that massive skill set. And it was a great way for me as a lowly service member. I mean, I was an officer, but we still don't get paid that much. That was a great way for me to add additional income. And that was a great way for me to start learning about out of state investing. Although I was not yet ready to buy and hold or fix and flip out of state, I had a lot of proof of concept knowing that I was finding and structuring great deals that other buyers did want. So if I did have, you know, if I didn't have the limiting beliefs, I did have access to capital at that time. I could have also bought those properties. The cool thing is, I mean, when I wholesaled a property, I made money after paying off all my expenses. Roughly on average, I'd get around $10,000 for every contract I sold to an end buyer. And then once all my expenses for, you know, pulling my lists, uh, paying a V or like skip tracing it, paying a VA and all that, like the systems and tools and all that, I'd end up with right around half of that like as true profit once taxes were accounted for. But if I didn't have any contracts, put any properties on a contract and sell that, then all of my time, money, and energy I spent over that time was wasted. The problem with wholesaling is you only eat what you kill when you kill it. And you have to spend a lot of money and time first before you can even kill, right? So you're spending money up front to then potentially make some more money. You can spend less money and use a lot more energy instead of paying a VA, you can go out and do all the, the initial calling and finding the initial levels of like the original cold calling. Have fun doing that. I want to see how long you can successfully do that because that is a freaking slog and that will definitely not make you financially free. If anything, it's a detraction to your goal. When I did that for the full one year, for a full um, year from that, when I closed in May of 2020, because in May of 2021, I was able to then house hack again. You can only own or occupy a property in the same location using an owner occupant loan, like once every year, roughly. I still had to write a letter and explain why I was going to do it again in that local area, but I was able to house hack again. And this time I used a three and a half percent down FHA loan. So my wife and I, we, we did it like literally May, we were able to buy it. Uh, I think like at the end of May, I want to say literally at the end of May, we closed on a four unit. So I already had it under contract a few months before to close as soon as I was able to. This four unit added an additional $2,000 a month in cash flow. We took my first property that had $1,000 to the second one that had $2,000. I now had $3,000 a month in cash flow that was coming in every single month. And I had all those ownership benefits I mentioned before. Seriously, think about 
what would three thousand dollars a month do for you how would that change your life i mean like i can't even like verbalize it. i think once again people focus on the hundred plus thousand dollars or twenty plus thousand dollars and i and i want that for you if that's what you want i want that for you but realistically how would three thousand dollars a month every single month plus all the ownership benefits of real estate change your life at that same time i started learning about creative financing more specifically at that time seller financing for my sub two family i was still over a year out from joining sub two so i did not know everything about creative finance that i do now but i did understand seller financing because that's much more common as long as the seller owned the property with no debt they could then act like the bank and finance the property to me so instead of having to use a bank and paying them a down payment taking out a new loan that then pays the seller this i would just make my down payment to the seller directly and then make my payments to them afterwards um, directly to the seller again so what i did was i combined my whole skin wholesaling skills of being able to find off-market investment opportunities and combine that with my buying skills my wife and i uh, wrote over 250 handwritten letters to potential seller finance property owners that own two to four unit properties so essentially i was pulling a list of owners that had um, little to no debt left on their property and there were two to four unit properties and ideally if they didn't live in that property even better we were definitely targeting those guys what you would call that is like a tired landlord or an absentee landlord if you're more you know knowledgeable that's kind of the terminology for it after writing those 250 handwritten letters got on a bunch of calls i was able to meet with over 20 of these sellers and there was one opportunity that stood out above the rest Although I sent the seller um, a letter for his duplex that he owned outright, he actually wanted to keep that property, but he did have 20 rental cabins that he wanted to sell as he was moving out of state and really didn't want to deal with it. Phenomenal property, generates a ton of cash flow, but those 20 units was more than he could think about handling outside of, outside of the state. And his problem was that he was trying to do too much himself as opposed to just outsourcing the management and the maintenance work. What he had was like a tenant of one of the cabins trying to manage it all, which was kind of ridiculous. I mean, we all know that's kind of ridiculous and it's, they're not set up for that necessarily, unless that's actually their job. But in this situation, as I mentioned, I was looking for seller finance opportunities. He had debt on the property, roughly 50% of the property value, right around $400,000 of debt. So we cannot do a straight seller finance deal. So at that time, even though I didn't know this at the time, implemented something called the Morby method. I did not know that was a thing. I don't even know that's what it was called. In very simple terms, what I did was I took out a new loan to purchase the property. I pay the down payment on that new loan, on this commercial loan. I had to combine over 13 different sources of income between selling off stocks, taking loans out against stocks, taking out 0% credit card loans, taking out like interest bearing credit card loans, taking out, um, I had crypto, I had a little bit of crypto, sold some of that, took some loans out against some of that. And I had two private money lenders. That was my first experience of raising capital. I just reached out to other service members and said, hey, I need to borrow money from you for the next 30 days, but I'm not just like borrowing it willy nilly. Um, this is the exact plan. I'm gonna give you really great returns for just giving me access to your money um, for 30 days. I'll give you 5% return on your money. Like if it was annualized, well, actually, no, 5% of their money is just five points, essentially, for letting me use that money for 30 days. Thankfully, because people saw what I was doing outside of that, and I was sharing my journey with some of the other service members, they knew that I somewhat knew what I was talking about, and they were willing to lend me some capital that they had so that I can take, I could do that investment opportunity. So that's what I used to pay. So I took out that new loan. When I took out that loan, that was used to pay off the seller's mortgage, and then the rest of that went to the seller. He receives the funds and then guess what he does in a Morby method? In a Morby method, what the seller does with the money that he just generated is he wires back the money back to me, his access. So roughly that 400,000 theoretically, but he needed $150,000 of that. So he sent me back around $250,000. And I'm, I'm simplifying it because there was part of it, the bank allowed to sell their finance. So in essence, right? Took out a new loan, that loan, was paid off the seller's existing debt. Seller kept $150,000 of that. And then he sent me back $250,000, which essentially allowed me to buy this property for $0 down because he covered all of my down payment and all the entry costs. 
and even the money that I was paying back to the service members and all those interests that I accumulated over those 30 days and actually got left over $2,000 left over. So I got paid $2,000 to then buy these 20 rental cabins, which generated me over $3,500 a month in cash flow. So when, and so just like that in 16 months, so this was September of 2021. So in 16 months for my first purchase in May of, uh, May of 2020 to September of 2021, I went from buying my very first property to acquiring 26 rental units that generated me over $7,500 a month in passive income. Because these were also buy and holds, right? Not fix and flips, not nothing else. Not only, in addition to that cash flow, remember, my tenants are paying down my debts, my properties are appreciating in value, and I do not pay any taxes. It's kind of insane when you think about it, like all the benefits of real estate investing, if you're buying great investments and you know what you're doing. So although I spent a ton of time mastering deal analysis and it prevented me from like that uh, paralysis by analysis, prevented me from being able to comfortably buy my first investment. Once I did the skills that, that I developed made it made my journey like skyrocket tremendously. So at the time when I was investing, um, interest rates were very low 2020 and 2021. But as many of you know, that was roughly around $2 million of real estate at that point. I've added another 18 million cents. So interest rates are not the excuse, like not at all. Um, that was actually, all that was actually the start of my investing journey. When I first began, I thought, you know, I have four levels of financial freedom. Level one is when your income exceed or your passive income exceeds your monthly needs. So like your housing, your food and that kind of stuff. Level two is when your income exceeds your needs and your wants. So whatever you have for travel and eating out and that kind of stuff. So between those, those properties, I was financial freedom level two, all my, um, my passive income covered all my needs and my wants. And I still had some leftover money each and every month that could be reinvested, but that was the start of my investing journey. I've scaled massively since then and have achieved level three financial freedom, which is basically your level two times two, which is kind of an arbitrary, just have more than enough money as your expenses grow over time. And then level four is what I'm working on now, which is that generational and legacy wealth. And that is a, as a big push by my uh, mentor, Pace Morby. So with all that being said, right, the first two years of my investing journey are insane. The next two that I've gone through uh, with the sub, sub two community, like watching it and unfold in real time have been even better. So how did I scale my portfolio to $20 million that generate over $20,000 a month of cash flow? This is part one of a four part masterclass series. This one is financial freedom through real estate. Next, we'll be talking about mastering deal analysis. As you saw, having great deal analysis has been so fundamental in my ability to be able to buy and hold real estate. And we're gonna talk about how I'm consistently generating great investment opportunities and working way less hard and more efficiently than a lot of other people buying deals, especially way less hard than fix and flippers, definitely way less hard than wholesalers. And then how I'm raising capital for all of my buy and holds. So I'm going to take it back to making it a little personal again. So I've had a few advantages in my investing journey. I had the massive advantage of as being 100% Armenian and my family immigrated to Russia. Thank goodness in 92, my mom moved to America and I was born in America as an American citizen. So the biggest advantage I will ever have in life, you know, and a lot of you have it as well, was being born in America and I was raised by a tiger mom. Uh, I don't know if it's like a Russian tiger mom or whatever, but very strict, very, um, very much dedicated to working hard and letting us know that we would be working hard and studying and be very studious and hardworking individuals. But at the same time, she worked two, three jobs my entire childhood as a single mom in a brand new country. And um, she barely made ends meet financially. That made me become hyper focused on financial freedom because I think the greatest gift you can ever have is being able, like bringing great kids into this world and then raising them up to be great human beings. And then one of the best ways to do that is to dedicate a lot of time and energy towards them and with them. So one of my goals, one of my, my that's why I've been so hyper-focused on financial freedom. Thankfully, I've had an extremely supportive wife. This is a huge advantage. I've had, I've been with my wife since high school. I haven't had to date around and, you know, waste a lot of time and energy and money trying to you know, go out to clubs and meet random people. And I don't know whatever people do. I don't know, I guess Tinder now or whatever. So I've been with my wife since high school. So I haven't had to worry about looking for another partner. 
And she's been extremely supportive for this entire journey with me. She was supportive when I took a massive pay cut to join the military. She was supportive, even though she cried when I told her we're moving from San Diego to Alaska for the military. She's been extremely supportive with my entire real estate investing journey, my personal finance journey, all of it, the whole financial freedom journey. And this journey right now where I'm trying to help as many other people do the same thing. And we both decided that because of our individual upbringings, we wanted to make sure like both of our parents had kids early when, and when they were not financially fit, it, like they honestly weren't financially fit to do so. Um, but they made it work. I mean, here we are and we've had this amazing life. Don't worry, I had, we both had amazing childhoods, but that taught us that we wanted to wait to have kids. And that's why we waited till after financial freedom, right around 30 years old, where I had, where we had our first kid. Additionally, I have the advantage of having a fairly high risk tolerance. I knew that the only way to become financially free was to invest. Hermosi would say just like, work your butt off 20 hours a day, grind, grind it off, build a business, sell that business, become a, have $50 million. I don't like that. That's, that is, that is way more risk, risky than I'm comfortable handling. The type of risk tolerance that I'm mentioning is earn good income, save that. Don't, don't keep up with the Joneses, spend on the things you care about. Don't waste money on things you don't care about to try to impress other people, invest that money into assets. So I knew that I would have to invest first. It was in stocks, right? Like I was going to invest in stocks. And then by the time I was uh, around 60, 65 years old, I'd have several million dollars that I could enjoy, even though I did not have time freedom throughout that journey. At least I definitely would have financial freedom and be able to live life on my terms at retirement age. But then I started learning about real estate and then I took action. And as I expressed the first two years of my journey, I took massive action. And that's the kind of the way that I am. If I understand something and understand it'd be beneficial for me, I will take massive action. I know that is also an advantage because not everyone is that way. It could be because my mom always believed in me and I've had a very supportive wife. So I feel comfortable taking action and taking some risk where other people may be a little bit more hesitant. Another advantage that I have is my brain is wired a certain way, which makes me a great engineer. I'm very systems and numbers oriented. As, as I put here, that is my, that is my shiz. Uh, a lot of you leverage my real estate investing calculators. Um, I, you know, with my partner created some amazing uh, CRM and automations um, to systematize our business as a whole. But having the engineer mindset has made being an engineer coming into real estate investing and then applying what I know and the way I think about systems and processes have been like massive in my ability to scale. And then naturally, because I'm a helper, I am a ma I am a go giver. But what I've learned over time is that there's this thing called law of reciprocity and it's real. You don't give and help other people for the sake of something good coming back to you. But I think everyone in this room is already a massive go-giver because a lot of us are in the same communities where that is like one of the number one rules outside of be resourceful. Um, and then don't ever directly message pace. Uh, you know, that's like the top three. That's like the golden rules. Uh, um, but the more you give somehow magically, like, I don't know, karma, whatever, whatever you believe in, however it works, God, karma, I don't know. We're all sharing the same wavelength and energy, whatever it is, somehow the more you give the more that comes back to you. And I've had so many amazing people in my life. And that's how I've been able to have a lot of direct support for my, for my mentor, because I've always spent a lot of time helping other people as well. I have also had a lot of disadvantages. I kept my W2 due to my limiting beliefs. I just quit my W2 in August of this year after already having over, I had at that point over $19,000 a month of cash flow, uh, around $18 million of real estate added a little bit to it since in the last couple of months. But I was not going to quit my job because it was very comfortable. It was easy. Why not? But after having my baby girl and them requiring me to come into the office more frequently, I just said, you know what? I'm not going to do that. They threatened to fire me if I didn't show up. No worries. I'll quit. In hindsight, I should have probably let them fire me so I can get some unemployment, you know, just a little bit more passive income temporarily. Uh, but whatever. That's the, that's like the amazing part of having this FU money and just being able to have that passive income where you don't have to worry about someone controlling your life like that. If I didn't have this, I would have been forced to miss after everything, after all this investing and all that, let's say I was fixing and flipping or whatever instead. Well, I guess you still have a lot of active income, but if I didn't have this passive income, if they told me I need to come in office, if I didn't, I'd be fired. 
And then I would literally go into a financial spiral because I could not take care of my family. And I, we know we'd lose a lot, whatever we owned and we wouldn't be able to, we would not be able to make ends meet. That would have been insane. That would have been like terrible. I could not have imagined that. So because I invested, it was not the end of the world. Um, and actually it was a massive blessing because now I just spend all my time, like all my extra time that I was working with my family. What I didn't know at that time was I did not know how to be an owner. I was actually a slave to my first 27 rental properties, 26 rental properties. They controlled me. I was doing way more than I should have been. I was working much harder than I should have been. I was not working smarter. I wasted too much time working on low value tasks. I mean, like for real, I was doing all my renovations, even though I had a realtor, I was literally finding all my deals and I was managing my own assets, my own properties, at least while I was local. None of that is owner mindset. That is employee mindset that is ingrained into us that that's what you got to do. I've learned a lot over time. I was investing in real estate, but up until September of 2022, I did not invest in myself and in my education. And I had no real mentor. I didn't know what I didn't know. That's literally what it was. My mentor showed me a different way of viewing things. I thought I was killing it. 27 year old, nice portfolio, all this good stuff. But I didn't realize, oh my God, I am working on things that I should not be working on. I didn't know there was another way to do it. I didn't know that I could scale and be more efficient because I didn't, I just literally didn't know. Like, I, I don't know. It's kind of like some of the stuff that I implement now, a lot of you don't know. So luckily for me, I've had the absolute best mentor in the real estate space for the last two years. As I mentioned, I'm a massive go-giver in the sub two community or owner's club community. I spend a ton of time helping people analyzing deals, buying their first one. Uh, if they have questions about wholesaling, fix and flipping, whatever, all of it. I help with a lot of that. And I even have my own free community where I help people weekly with deal analysis, provide free trainings, all of that good stuff. And all of that, somehow this man magically knows all this good stuff is happening. I think every time I help people buy deals, um, they end up somehow it comes back to pace and then he knows and I don't know, whatever, that law of reciprocity. And he has poured in so much into me in this journey. And so I've been able to combine everything Pace has poured into me in the last two years and then my own superpowers to then reverse engineer the exact path to massive growth. My, my 18 plus million dollars real estate I've added in the last two years. I mean, I know a lot of you have seen me at the start of my journey and I was already doing pretty solid, but this growth, I don't think anyone could have accounted for because I, although I had a lot of, uh, let's say support or ability to ask questions, um, it's not like anyone ever gave me anything. No one ever gave me anything. I had to work for everything that I had to do. So I combined my engineering skills to say, okay, if I want more financial freedom, which means I need more cash flow, which means I need more assets, which means I need more money to buy those assets, which means I need more deals to, you know, put the money to buy those assets and to get more deals. How can I do that efficiently? Like reverse engineering that exact process, systematizing that whole thing into a step-by-step -step blueprint defining what are the inputs and bottlenecks within that entire process, continually iterating or improving that process. You know, you take action, you see the results, and then you improve it. That's what iterating is, action, results, and then you make a decision, typically improving that. So making it better and better. And as someone who, I should have put the word lazy. I'm not lazy. I work hard, but I don't like to work, especially over the last two years, work on things that I shouldn't be working on. So I've created and leveraged a ton of automations and systems to be as efficient as possible, to find great deals, to raise money, to manage and oversee our properties. And then I've effectively started to delegate the easily repeatable tasks to our team um, and then prioritize the things that I should be working on, my business partner should be working on, and then what our team should be working on. And most importantly, one of the biggest things I learned in the sub two community was have learning how to leverage other people's money, capital partners, right? I'm not I'm not ever asking for money. I don't ask anyone for money. I don't ask actually anyone for anything. I'm not an asker. I'm not an ask hole. There you go. Uh, but what I do do is provide amazing investment opportunities to other investors so we can all get wealthy together. So leveraging other people's money and then no longer having my own capital be a bottleneck has allowed me to scale my portfolio massively. And it has allowed me to lend my money out to other investors for actually better returns than I can get if I just put them into my own deals because not everyone is great at raising capital, but they have good investments and they have good experience, but they don't prioritize the skill of raising capital and raising it at good prices. So I'm able to lend my money out at higher returns, 
then the, um, then if I just use my own money and if I use my own money in my own deals, I would, it would be a bottleneck because I never wanted my own money to be a, a limiting factor to my ability to buy a great investment when it became available. So I just combined what I've learned in the sub two community. You know, we have 40 plus, you know, calls a week, live calls a week. We have a thousand plus uh, Zoom trainings in the vault. And then just being re- very intentional with family nights and asking questions, you know, at meetups and this and that, connecting with the right people, leveraging our community, leveraging the network. I've been able to massively scale my portfolio. And if you really think about it, what are what do you really need to buy and hold properties? Here, you need great investment opportunities. You need capital to fund those entry costs. And you need an effective step-by-step plan to connect all the dots to minimize your risk and maximize your returns throughout the due diligence process and your deal analysis process to close on that property. How are you going to effectively um, onboard your property? Do you need to renovate it? Maybe furnish it? If you're doing something like me, I do a lot of co-living now, like rent by the room model. And then if you're leveraging other people's money, you need an effective plan on how you're going to raise that money, a system to keep track of everything. And a lot of you also raise capital and a lot of people try to raise capital, but a big struggle is how am I going to keep track of everything? And then how do I like send everything out efficiently? How do I present my terms to uh, lenders and partners so that they very clearly and coherently understand like what the investment opportunity is and like, how are you going to pay them and all this other stuff? Like you need this step-by-step plan. And essentially for me, it's like 15 repeatable steps over and over again. And that's basically what the next three trainings are going to focus on those major areas, deal mastery, efficient, uh, deal generation or investment opportunities and raising capital. And this was, this was my path to financial freedom. You want the secret? I mean, that's literally it. Find great investment opportunities, raise capital to fund those entry costs, does not have to be your own money, have an effective step-by-step plan. And in the path, you buy those investments. As long as you're operating them successfully, you are generating cash flow, and then you are getting all those major ownership benefits. Once again, cash flow makes you financially free. That passive income, actually I had this conversation today on Facebook with uh, one of one of the stud, one of the stud wholesalers who's a young dude who's got over 13 properties now. But we were talking about cash flow is what makes you financially free. But you can you can take advantage of the ownership benefits of real estate, appreciation, debt pay down, and and uh, the tax benefits. But if you don't have cash flow, you'll never be financially free because you need that passive income to be financially free. So you focus on financial freedom by focusing on passive income, by focusing on cash flow. And then you get all of the amazing ownership benefits, all of that equity that gets uh, between debt pay down and appreciation gets added to your net worth every single month. You get all of that, but without cash flow, you will ne- never be financially free. So your goal is to find those great investment opportunities that generate you solid cash flow. So literally leveraging exactly that in my step-by-step process, I've been able to buy over 60 rentals worth right around $20 million, raise over $3 million of capital. Well, actually, I've raised much more than that, but I've deployed around $3 million of capital to purchase that portfolio. I've lent out over a quarter of a million dollars. So the majority of money that I've made through um, wholesaling, I've utilized as a lender and to put into passive index funds, which I have a huge passive index fund portfolio because that's where I was throwing all my money as just, that's where a lot of my fixing, uh, a lot of my wholesaling money went into, plus a little bit into crypto. And then I'm converting as much of that into my self-directed IRA or just lending that out in general to others, but I'm doing that a little slowly. And it was all because mentors, my mentor made all the difference for me. He showed me that there's a better way to do real estate. And I know not everyone has the same advantages as me, which is great because we all have unique, op- we all have unique skills and all that. My skill is really taking something that may seem complex, breaking it down very simply, making it step-by-step step, and then making that process very efficient. So you waste no more time than you need to to get the end result. That's literally, I mean, a lot of you have been in sub two as long as me, some less than me, uh, a lot, even more than me. And I joined when there was around 2000 members. So, I mean, the majority you joined after, but you've seen the progress. And I'm just thankful that my advantages have applied directly towards real estate. And because of my go-giving nature, our amazing mentor, Pace Morby, has poured in so much to me to be able to to, uh, just add extra value along this journey for me and really just change my mindset Show me how to be a better man, better husband, better father, in addition to real estate investing. And that's basically what I have now. I have the blueprint that is fully tailored 
towards your situation if you want to hit the ground running with financial freedom. Like if, if that's your goal, if you know you want to be a buy and hold real estate investor, you want to leverage other people's money to buy and hold real estate, you want to do it as efficiently as possible, you want to work ideally uh, remotely, not on other people's time, like wholesaling, you got to be on the ball all the time. And, um, and if you want to do that, like as efficiently as possible, then that's basically what I'm offering to people right now. I, this was primarily for my owner's club community members, but I'm opening it up like the owner's club family, but I'm opening it up to sub two people as well as uh, like our sub two family, right? Not sub two people or sub two family. And just really anyone who's been part of this journey, especially people who are literally here with me live today. What I created was I took my six part masterclass. So I mentor people at a high ticket value, $25,000 for a six part series on everything that I just described, but very systematically broken down in extreme detail. They pay me $25,000 and it's, it seems like a lot of money, but when you really think about it, if you're buying two ish, two to three properties, you're paying that in assignment fees. So if you can negotiate your deals to then make them better, you're saving that money up front. Or if you're leveraging capital raising to then be able to buy real estate, for example, one of the people that I just mentored within six weeks, she got, and I'm not offering this. I'm not offering this one-on-one -on -one mentorship. I'm not, I'm sorry. It's too much work for me. It does not align with my lifestyle. So I'm not offering that to anyone like this one-on-one -on -one type, but within six weeks, she was able to, um, buy and hold her first cash flow and property that generates them over $2,000 a month through some phenomenal negotiation and working together. She was able to raise over a hundred. This was her raising capital, utilizing my exact process and systems and tools and templates. And just the way that I frame capital raising, she was able to raise $139,000 on her very first investment. So between the cash flow uh, in one year, she's paid back that $25,000. We're able to structure the deal even better so that she actually saved it up front anyway. But then now she raised six times that amount that she invested to be able to buy and hold to, to uh, buy that property using none of her own money. And the best part, I don't want to be a lifetime mentor or anything like that. I want to help people understand the process, understand the systems, the tools and the resources that have worked well for me. Cause I don't want, I don't want to be a billionaire. I I'm happy buying my one to two deals a month. I don't, I don't, I think I believe in uh, collaboration over competition. So I know that you can get plenty of, I know that I can do my thing. You can do your thing. We can collaborate, do things together, whatever. I'm not worried about competition. I want as many other people as possible to become financially free. The difference is I know that the majority of people, 99 plus percent of our country is not willing to put in the work anyway, and they're not going to be consistent enough. So it doesn't really make a difference. Even if I share this message with everyone, um, and I know that people in this room, obviously, will take advantage of that information and will scale. So it's just like an insane value if, if, if you go that route and you do so. I also have my ultimate creative finance calculator, which is like, if you search it, it's like the best one out there for um, real estate investing. I provide a one-on-one -on -one strategy call so that we can actually define your custom blueprint to real estate investing. It's going to be some variation of what we just talked about, but it's essentially... Um, I really want to understand where are you currently at? What is your current experience? What is your current capital? Like, what are you really looking to do? Where's your market? So that we can figure out an exact plan for you. So you can really hit the ground running as soon as possible. And obviously a network of other investors, not like sub two, not even like owner's club. It's not, it's not a, a network of investors that are trying to wholesale, fix and flip RV parks, literally everything under the sun because everything works, but it's really hard to create customized step-by-step -step, or like a step-by-step -step plan to to do those other strategies. Very easy if you're primarily focused on one to four unit properties because the deals come to you at that point. And I'll explain what that is, but like you're in a network, a community of people who are all doing the same thing, buying and holding real estate, raising money from other people. And you're also gonna find business partners in there because in my opinion, the best buy and hold business has one partner primarily focused on deals, the other one focused on capital raising. So then you guys are all trained up the same and you guys are following the same strategy, partnering together. You've already showed commitment to be part of that journey together. And, um, and that, that's really what it is, a very targeted group. If that's not for you, I, I totally understand. That doesn't make a lot of sense. If you don't want to buy and hold real estate as efficiently as possible, using none of your own money and become financially free through cash flow and getting massive ownership benefits, I get it. I don't blame you. I don't understand you, but I don't blame you, right? And yeah, but wait, like this crap, right? But wait, there's more. <laughs> That's not all, right? 
I really want to win the school games. I know a lot of you are, are following along with this journey. I'm top 10 in something called the school games with Alex Ramosi. If I add the most members to my community, um, it's paying members. If I add the most in my community, I get the chance to meet Alex Ramosi, which means I get to elevate this message to as many people as possible. I get to learn from Alex Ramosi and provide that value to my community and everyone else around me, right? I'm not one of those that because I'm an owner's club, I don't share stuff with sub two because I've done this. I don't like, I want, I want to be that funnel because one of my main skill sets is taking this information, making it digestible and, and pretty systematized and helping other people with that. I want to take this info and then add my, a ton of value to everyone who, you know, who's along the journey with me. All right. For those watching the recording, I will give you an additional live deal analysis session. So we already do weekly calls. I already help you analyze your deals live weekly as a group. I already help you determine how much capital should you raise. I already help you understand, does it make more sense to use a PML or a PMP? I already help you determine the highest and best use of the property. It, should it be a co-living, a short-term rental, a mid-term rental, a long-term rental? I already help you do that in a live group setting. But I will also do an additional live deal analysis. You find a deal that you really like. Let's run through that together. Figure out how can we make that the best possible deal for you? And then what amount of capital would you need to raise to then be able to buy that deal? I'm adding that as an additional bonus in, a, in addition to the one-on-one -on -one strategy session with you, which is more focused on your overall business plan. So how much, right? What this is, I do have a free community. Someone asked about it. There is the Wealth of Real Estate free community. That's not what this is. The Wealth of Real Estate community, there's a lot of value on deal analysis and things like that. You get parts of the training focused on financial freedom, but this is my intentional investor community. It is a paid community. This goes for $999 a month. Still a lot cheaper than $25,000, but I'm making, I'm doing 50% off for the month of November so that I can win the school games and then add a bunch of value to everyone who's part of this journey with me as part of this masterclass, this webinar, and who's doing this for the first month that we're in. So you get all that $35,000 of value, all the courses, the live calls, all my tools, you get all my templates. Well, here you get my templates, not my templates but you get all my templates, my resources. I give you my CRM that I use. You get free access to my CRM. You get access to, I've consolidated over, like I've got a ton of wholesalers that I'm working with that have consolidated over like at any one given time, like 75 to hundred deals, creative deals, just ready to be underwritten and bought. All just there for you presented in a very easy fashion. All of that. I give all of that plus the calculator and all the other stuff for $499. Not, not, uh, it's actually $499 a month. Anyone who's joined starting December 1st will be paying $9.99 a month every month moving forward. You cancel any single time that you want. Let's say you're one of the people that all you need to do is go in, speed run through the trainings, download all my tools and whatever, and you're out. When you cancel in a month, I'm not going to blame you. I don't think that's the best strategy. I think give yourself maybe two to three months and then get out because I really don't want, I don't think you need me for six, 12 18 months or whatever. Like some people need, need support for longer, but, and I'll continue. I, every single month I give out more and more cool stuff and prices and all that stuff. Every month I'm unlocking like new features for everyone, like the free CRM access and all that kind of stuff. Um, but if you join, sorry, November, you will be locked in at 499 a month, every single month until you decide to cancel. If you wait until no, uh, December 1st, it'll be 999 a month. You're still welcome to join, but it'll just be a higher price point. Cause this is like an introductory offer for anyone that's been part of this journey with me from the very beginning. And, um, and if you cancel in your 499, you come back later, you'll be at the 999 until I decide to just stop like allowing more people in because I really care less about the number of members. I care much more about how much value am I providing to you? And then how much progress are you actually making to financial freedom? So if there's anything that's ever missing in the courses or questions, I will literally create all of this stuff for you. Like I will create more custom trainings. I will help define things and make them better and more easy for you because I know we're not all at the same skill set. And maybe the people that paid more when we created this content are at a higher um, experience level, or maybe I skip from A to C, but you're confused about B. Maybe I, <laughs> thanks Aaron. So uh, thank you guys. I appreciate all the love and support. Um, for those of you that are, uh, let me see if I can do something fun here. Boom. Uh, for those of you that are part of this, like, I, I just appreciate it. And if you're not, I totally get it. Like, I can't convince you. I can't make you do it. I think you are making a, actually, if like you're serious about buying holding real estate and leveraging other people's money, I think you're making a 
serious mistake not to because it's just as efficient and systematic as possible. And I'm one of the few that's been extremely transparent about my entire journey, the good and the bad, mostly like 90 plus percent, the good. Um, and so you see the value that I provide and, um, and it, this is just me getting started. Remember, you see how awkward I've been throughout this. This is the start of my journey. I am so thankful. And, you know, and, and like I said, I have an amazing relationship with pace. He, he pours into me and my goal is to then pour in all that extra to everyone, but especially the community that I'm building all this with. Right. So I thank you for that. Let me try to show you the trainings that are actually involved. Like I don't even care. You screenshot it. You go recreate your own, whatever. I don't care. I want you just to see the amount of value that I'm providing. And for anyone that just ready to do it, just like here, here's the link. I'm dropping it right now. And like I said, like people pay me $500. Well, I didn't say this. People pay me $500 to help them analyze a deal. Seems like a lot of money in like theory, $500 to then be able to save tens of thousands of dollars or to be able to raise tens of thousands, if not hundred plus thousand dollars to buy and hold real estate. It's a pretty easy, it's a pretty easy um, trade-off, right? Um, that's especially the idea with the, with the $500 a month or the $499. So actually you save a dollar. So that's pretty sick. All right, let me just present what's in the training. Wow, literally the majority of you have been here this whole time. You guys are amazing, incredible people. Thank you so much. I will literally, Neil, I will do all of that. I'll, Patrick, I'll answer all those questions. Let me just show you what's inside the training first. What's just inside that? Like I, like I said, I wasn't planning on doing this, but let me see if I can pull it up again. Okay, so this is the Wealth of Real Estate community. We just opened up. We already have 22 members that are part of it. And let's just go to the training. So the main value is going to be this classroom. This is the six part financial freedom. Uh, this is going to actually answer some of your question, Neil. This is a six part financial freedom, like boot camp that people pay 25 plus thousand dollars for. One is financial freedom. Actually, if you're in my wealth, the real estate community, I give you access to this for free because I really want people to understand what financial freedom actually looks like through real estate investing. Mastering deal analysis. Like this is not just like a, like a, a, 30 second reels and clips and that like, this is some real, like insane amounts of value. Like you're asking questions about deal analysis, all that I buy and hold all different types of properties. We go into all of it, the nitty gritty. That's just one. This is, this is one part of deal analysis. And this is all step-by-step -step and systematic for you. And my, one of my friends, Dustin Growski has helped me create a custom GPT. That's going to review all of these trainings. And then when you watch, once you're done watching all these, you'll get access to it. I want you to watch it. Oh, there we go. Thank you, Jamisha. I appreciate you for everyone that is. Well, that's sick. I didn't know it did that. That was pretty fun for anyone that is joining. Um, you'll get access to that GPT. So you can ask it questions on behalf of kind of the way that I'm educating, but also you'll say, Hey, I want to know if I want to learn about like pad split income comping, it'll say, Hey, go to this training at this time. Michael talks about X, Y, Z things to make it as efficient as possible. And then here's the ultimate creative finance calculator. You get a copy of that for the rest of your life. You join for one month, you download my $500 calculator as being part of this. You will literally get lifetime access to be able to grab a copy. And I don't know if you've ever seen this thing. We're not going to go too crazy into it, but you get this, you get a copy every single time for the rest of your life. I mean, like the idea for my calculator is it makes deal analysis as easy as possible for creative finance, right? It, is it easy? No, not inherently. You have to kind of understand it. That's why I provide so much training on the topic, but it makes it very systematic and easy. And it has for all the different contingencies, balloons, sub two, seller finance hybrid. It does automatic deal analysis scenarios for you. If you were to reduce the purchase price or lower the down payment, like you set the terms here, it'll tell you if you reduced it 10%, does that then hit your buy box? If you reduce the interest rate on the seller finance loan, at what percentage, what interest rate does it then become a deal? And most importantly, this piece, the, the capital partner, when you're raising capital, what do the returns look like for you and your private money partner, depending on your customized ownership splits? If you're providing a preferred return, what is your cash on cash return? Or what is their cash on cash return? What is their return on investment? What are your returns? If you're using a private money lenders, is this property cash flow or not? This is one, five, and 10 year. We were talking a lot about that. People think of properties too short. They only look at them at the one year timeline. If you're buying and holding real estate for one year, you're not exactly doing it right. Um, if you're raising money for a primary lender, you just screenshot this and put this in the templates. You're raising money for a primary partner, you just screenshot this and put this in the templates that I provide you. 
All right, let's keep going. So that's mastering deal analysis, an insane amount of, on deal analysis. Lead generation, my systematic way of generating deals, right? How I'm consistently generating deals. And I've actually made that better since because I'm literally providing you a whole hundred, right around a hundred deals ready to, thank you, Jamisha. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for signing up live. That was pretty fun to see. Um, this I think is the bread and butter of everything that I do. I think other people will like the other stuff, but this is that when I say engineer, this is that exact step-by-step -step process. My 15 steps I'm implementing over and over and over again to make this process as efficient as possible. Everything literally from A to Z on every single deal. And then this, you've never seen anything like this before. And I've paid for capital raising uh, mentorships. People talk about raising money for buy and hold or for fix and flips. Very few people have mastered the art of raising money, especially over $3 million that they've deployed into $20 million of assets for buy and hold investing. So it's what is what are the different strategies? How do you know how much capital to raise? And then what is what do the returns look like between PML, PMP? How do you know which one to do? How do you how do you actually find capital partners? How do you share the info with them in a strategic way? Then how do you systematically raise that capital, leveraging systems to be efficient? And then I won't go into the weeds with this one, but the systems and operations, everything you need to do. Oh, thank you, Ryan. I appreciate you, brother. Everything that you need to do um, to systematize this process and make it as efficient as possible. This is where you get access to a free CRM. I pay $300 out of my pocket so that you guys get free access to that CRM. Uh, Lorraine, how, how long would all these courses be? In real time, it was like, 15 trainings around two hours each on. So 30 hours of content, but it's all very systematic. Thank you. Will. appreciate you, brother. It's very systematic. It's very much um, like in sequence and you're taking action while you're learning. Like I said, I'm not just here to tell you what to do. I'm showing you what to do and then, and then showing you how to do it. And then you have to do your homework. So then you keep moving forward. Like some of the resources I provide all my partner call scripts right there. When I'm raising, uh, when I, when I'm meeting with a capital partner, what is that slide deck that I present to make, to like convey information effectively and providing that template so that you can do the same. When I'm raising money through a primary lender, what does that look like? What does that pitch deck look like? Primary partner, what does that look like? Capital raising, when I'm on my CRM and, and we have our um, text and email templates, you get access to all that stuff. And it's already auto uploaded into the CRM I provide you. It's literally, I can't think of, uh, I can't think of a more comprehensive, more uh, like amazing way to go about um, providing this information if your main goal, right, is to buy and hold real estate, leveraging other people's money that is generating you $500 to $1,000 per property cash flow, and you have this step-by-step -step blueprint to do it over and over and over and over again. I, I, don't, I don't know where else you can find the same thing. Am I the best fix and flipper? No. I fix and flip two to four properties a year. Am I the best wholesaler? No. But I um, fix and flip plenty of properties a deal. Or, uh, plenty of properties a year. What I am phenomenal at is buying and holding real estate and raising all the money to do so, so that I'm using none of my own money to buy these deals. Lorraine. All right, let's get through questions. Do I have example success stories from your students? Well, I just gave you one right there. Um, well, Birdie, uh, a lot of you in sub two know Birdie. Birdie went through my six week boot camp. She wasn't really buying and holding real estate investments. She fixed and flipped. She um, did some wholesale deals. She partnered on a few other things, but before that, she never really bought a great real estate investment property. So with that one deal, she's now generating over $2,000 a month of cash flow. We help analyze it and figure out what the returns look like and what everything would look like. And then develop the marketing material. She was able to raise $139,000 to then buy that real estate investment, utilizing the exact process that I provide. She had to pay $25,000 for that one-on-one -on -one mentorship. You guys get access to all of those same trainings, all those same resources for literally $4.99 a month. I can't make it any more of a sweetheart deal. It's going up to the $9.99 a month for anyone that knew that joins in December. But I know a lot of people want to join sub two or have joined sub two, and it costs a lot of money up front. This is different. It's it's monthly. So you you cancel anytime. You stop paying when you feel like it's no longer worth it. And what I'll guarantee you is that it will always it, it will be worth it. But at a certain point, you're gonna you're gonna move past me. And I want that. If your goal is to have a billion dollars or a hundred million dollars of real estate, I want you to do that. It's the same process to do it over and over again. And whether you want to buy multifamily in the future, RV parks, businesses, whatever you want to do, it's a lot easier when you're already financially free and you have more than enough passive income coming in each and every month. 
So then you can pursue whatever you care about after once you're financially free. All right, so let's see. Will watching on YouTube came in to say how amazing the calculator is. Thank you, brother. How long would it take to get these courses? I would say around 30 hours, but a lot of that is action at the same time. So you're learning and taking action. It's extremely comprehensive, but you can also skip to the parts that make the most sense for you. Not everyone needs every part of it, but in my opinion, the best way to go through the process is systematically. All right, let's see. Deal analysis calculator is game changer. Yes, I agree with you. Patrick said, do we have to be part of sub two community to be able to use the program? No, you do not have to be part of sub two. I also show you like, you know, understanding seller finance and sub two. This is not a creative finance course, but you're going to have to leverage creative finance because all of the deals that I'm buying is creatively financed. It's a lot easier to find great deals in this market that are creatively financed, working with wholesalers that are providing you direct deals that are all creatively financed. And um, a lot of my deal analysis is creatively financed and you're able to raise other people's money more easily for creative financing as opposed to traditional financing. Do you need to be part of sub two? No. Is it an advantage and should you try to raise or try to save enough money to then become a part of sub two while you're, while you're doing all this? For sure. You should definitely, you should definitely try to join sub two if you can. Can you discuss some of the strategies that you're using that work in today's environment that you'll be teaching? Is it a, just a mix of midterm rental and right by the room to get cash flow since long-term rental doesn't work? How many methods rely on sub two financing? Okay, Neil, great question. I kind of hit some of that. Let me let me hit that. So I'm 80% of my portfolio, especially moving forward, are co-living or rent by the room, the pad split model. I buy a house and then I uh, make it six plus bedrooms and I rent it out. Um, I rent it out by the room. One of the main reasons is those properties cash flow a lot more. And especially if I'm raising other people's money, I need and I need enough cash flow to pay them and myself to make sure it's worth my while. And because it's rent by the room and we're cash flowing so much, we tend to be buying bigger properties in better like cities and in uh, better locations of the city because those are the most conducive to great investments. I'm not saying you're buying A plus neighborhoods, but you're buying good neighborhoods in major cities. You know, you're buying C to uh, B um, neighborhoods in major cities and those properties don't only cash flow you more because you're leveraging the passport model, but you are also, um, they're also appreciating better because they're in better areas. They um, have larger loan amounts. And because it's a larger purchase price, typically then you can also leverage better forms of, um, you can leverage better loans that way as well. All right, so let's see. Let me put the link up again, just for anyone who's interested. And like I said, you don't have to sign up before the end of the month. If you do want to sign up, you should definitely sign up before the end of the month. So you're not paying the full price starting December 1st. You get the 50% discount for life until you decide to cancel. Um, but if you do sign up by midnight tonight, I'll give you an additional one-on-one -on -one, uh, deal analysis. Like you bring me a deal. I'll help you with A to Z about everything. Andrea, no. Um, oh, wait, let me get back to that other question. Sorry, I'm trying to answer. Where's your question, brother? Neil. So then, but I also have short-term rentals. I have mid-term rentals and I have long-term rentals. But honestly, because of interest rates and because we're leveraging other people's money, getting one to four hundred, one to five hundred dollars a month of cash flow on a long-term rental, there isn't enough juice to be squeezed that can be spread out enough to make it worth my while and my business and like my capital partners. Like if you're, if you're a primary lender, you're probably not getting nearly enough money. Like you you can't even pay the interest on that. If it's primary partner, it's not a lot of value splitting one to five hundred dollars a month. You're better off finding deals that are generating you a thousand plus. And all of my deals on average are a thousand plus dollars of cash flow. We don't buy properties that are not generating over a thousand dollars of cash flow. But I have midterm, I have long term, and the main properties that I'm buying are seller finance, sub two, and hybrid, the combination of those. Do I leverage and implement Morby methods and other creative strategies? Sure. But for the buy and hold, it's primarily seller finance, um, seller finance, sub two, and, and hybrid. So it's a combination of the two. So all of the above. And that's why I train on how to analyze all those. And I mean, Birdie's one of many examples. She's not the end all be. We've had plenty of people that have implemented this and some of it's been free. Some of it has been uh, people who have been along the journey, which I provided access to, and they had massive results throughout the process. Birdie raised capital from sub two or other lenders. Birdie raised her capital through sub two and owner's club. So that's why I mentioned it's great to, if you're trying to raise money on creative finance deals, it's hard to convince or, or educate someone on everything creative finance, but we also all have our own networks. And we all attract a different type of person that wants to work with us. So you're going to have your own, um, you're going to have your own tribe of people that you're like with the strategies I share to like leverage and create that those capital investment opportunities. 
you're going to, you're going to raise money through who makes the most sense for you. But you, what you'll learn is people in this room, I assume you're here because you want to actually go and do this thing. A lot of capital partners, they fall into two categories. A, some of my capital partners. Oh, thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, we heard another cha-ching. Um, a lot of my capital partners, A, they want to work with me so that they can learn the skills to then be able to reinvent this or like reimplement this business for themselves. The funny part is that now that this is out there, I might be losing that demographic because this is a much better use of their money than putting 50 to a hundred plus thousand dollars on a deal. Yes, they get that ownership benefit with me, but this is way more straightforward and strategic way for them to buy and hold real estate and learn that process. But then B is a lot of people either don't want to put in the time and effort or don't, don't feel, will never feel like they're ready to do so independently. So they will lend money to others so they can be part of these deals or get high interest rate or like 12% interest rate, eight to 12% interest rate return um, on their money. So like, yes, there's a lot of people who pay and join sub too, but they're not all actively buying and holding real estate. They're going to be, they're going to end up being your partners and lenders. And that's not just sub two. I mean, what the strides that meant a lot of my like 25 plus percent and that number is growing is coming from outside of sub two. Um, so it just depends on, on what your main focus is. Andre is the drip is the content drip fed. No, I don't do that crap. I'm not making anyone pay me money and then giving you unlocking stuff after a week or two. No, you get all of it. You get all, you get all of it right away. You get everything uh, immediately. You can pick and choose the, the parts of training that make the most sense for you. Um, you can do literally whatever you want. And I love that you're asking that question, Andrea. Love you. One of my capital partners who is probably, if she joins, I don't know if she's one of the ones that paid. If she joins, she's going to crush it because she is one of those capital partners that, that has been lending to then learn this process. And I know that it's kind of hard to learn the process through one property at a time. It's a lot better when you see this collection, this collective like, uh, uh, systematic step-by-step -step blueprint, step-by-step -step process for you to be able to do it. It's way more valuable than just learning it through one property. Can it be easily digestible for a beginner investor? Yes. So all the, like one person that I've ran through recently had 17 plus properties. They just needed to leverage more creative finance and capital raising to be able to scale their portfolio. But plenty of people have done it for their first deal. And I actually provide, I don't even show you guys. I have an additional training that um, I just include for free. This is like your zero to one guide. If this is your very first investment, if this is your first buy hold, watch this first. And I provide this to you. Watch this first, leverage the tools and resources, but watch this first to then understand the foundations and then go through the veteran investor, like the six week intensive boot camp. Oh, I was not screen sharing. I'm sorry. So in addition to these six, I've also included something that um, it's my blueprint to real estate investing. Like it's the beginner's guide. So if you're working on your very first real estate investment, this would be the go-to immediately. Knock this one out, understand all this process, and then go into the more advanced training. It's not that people like Birdie, for example, was not really a buy and hold investor. This was, this was the exact process she implemented then be able to buy and hold her first great real estate investment deal and then be able to raise all the money to then buy that investment. And like now she's going to keep crushing it because she has all the skills and tools she needs to be able to um, scale her portfolio. So yes, very digestible for a beginner. The more knowledge and experience you have, the easier it is, obviously. So Patrick, are you saying that this training includes sub two, including the paperwork, so no need to get in sub two? I'm not saying that. I'm recommending that you get into sub two. And the thing is, you're not, you should not be the low leverage test. You should not be drafting your own contracts anyway. You should be paying a transaction coordinator who's providing the contracts. So that part is moot. That doesn't even matter. You don't need direct access. I'm not giving you access. If you're not in sub two, I'm not giving you access to the contracts. That'd be against the, uh, that'd be against like the rules or whatever of sub two. But if you're leveraging a transaction coordinator who's handling all that, that'll all be included for you. And I recommend using a transaction coordinator whether you've bought 60 plus properties or your first one, that is all, um, you should definitely be leveraging uh, a transaction coordinator. Neil, have you been handling property management with rent by the room? So yes, um, originally um, when my business partner and I went together and bought our properties for the first 15 rentals, we were self-managing. That was a low leverage task for us. We were self-managing and then we hired and I share all this, the journey and then like the, the people I say you should, I recommend you should hire and when, and then what roles do they fill out in that property acquisition process? Like what role should they be doing as you scale and hire them on? So you can train, depending on your experience, you could also tr use this as a training tool um, for your operator, for, you know, whoever you got on your team. But now we have an asset manager 
who oversees two virtual assistants who then leverage between PadSplit and, and Airbnb. They are then managing like the day-to-day guest communications and all that's needed to be able to uh, manage these properties. And that was really just a, like a mathematical decision. We were spending like over $12,000 a month in property management. We hired a asset manager for $4,500 a month and then VAs for another less than $2,000 a month. So we're saving money to get better, more um, standardized property management. And that is the goal for you too. You want to scale to that. If you have enough properties and it makes financial sense to, you want to scale to that. And that's the advantage. I've just gone through this. I've implemented it. I'm, that's what I'm saying. I'm iterating and improving this process. As I could, I'm not done buying real estate. I'm still buying one to two a month. Maybe my goal is not to buy three plus a month anymore, but one to two is perfectly fine for me because of where I'm already at. And I don't want to work more than I need to because I'd rather take that time and, and spend it on my family like this. I'm going to be done with this in like five minutes so I can go eat dinner with my family. But um, but yeah, so I show you all that as transparently as possible. And if you feel like something's missing, you literally ask me for anything, anytime, and I got you covered. I will literally always get you covered. I will help you with whatever you need because I've already been transparent about my journey all the way up until this point, And I will continue to do so. Um, especially within this community, because it's, it's going to be a safe space for us to be able to really mastermind and strategize together. 100%, Patty. And I mean, I've, I've said a big part of this. I want to help other people achieve financial freedom. I need to do a lot of this in November because first of all, I, I appreciate you believing in me and, and doing this with me. You've already seen the results of it, but now it's time for you to do the same thing. And um, if I win the school games in November, then I get to meet Hermosi, then I get to bring back a ton more value to our community. Just imagine how insane that would be to have that direct one-on-one -on -one access and then provide that value back into the community. So um, I, I'm very authentic and that's why I'm authentic about like why I need it done in this month. Don't forget, you can also get access to the community and Michael. Yes. Oh yeah. So, oh, I didn't even mention the best part. We do live weekly calls every week. Plus I'm doing all these one-on-ones and all that stuff. I, even if it's not a group call, if you have a question for me, I will answer that. You can post it anytime you want. For the people that are joining, if you have a question, I will create more training and content because I don't think it's, I think it's it's pretty solid, but I'm biased. So if you're in and you need more help, I will create more stuff for you. I will, I will just share all that with you. Thanks, Andrea. Yes. Okay. Andrea, my, my, my lady right here. Thank you. Yeah. So we do our live weekly calls in addition to everything else. Is there coaching included for making your first deal? 100%. So I have the entire blueprint for buying your first deal. But then honestly, I would skip a lot of that. Whether you're buying your first deal or you're someone who's trying to buy their 10th or 20th deal, it's the same freaking concept. Um, and I show it so systematically and easily. It does not matter if you have a lot of experience or not. And between the trainings and my live support with you, you are going to be able to buy whatever deals that you want to buy. You just bring it to me and I'll help you help you determine if that's a good deal or not during our live group coaching or anyone that joins between the before midnight tonight. I will also give you that additional um, bonus of a deal analysis. Thank you, Jennifer. I'm so glad that you're joining. You're such a perfect fit for this. You guys get the $4.99 price right now. Um, everyone who joins after starting December 1st is going to be paying $9.99 a month for, and they don't get all these bonuses that you guys get. Only the people in the month of November, and then you guys get the additional bonus for signing up now and everyone who signed up before this moment, because you guys are like my extremely early adopters, right? It's only the seventh of the month. So it's only been live for like five, six days. So, so that is, that is the discounted price. Like I, that is the $4.99 a month is the discounted price, Nick. If you are taking action as you are learning the material, what could a timeline look like for your first deal? So I love that question, Josh. If you are taking action as you are learning the material, what could the timeline look like for your first deal? I would focus first and foremost on education. If I would give yourself 90 days. In my opinion, the best thing you could do, and I have kind of this roadmap, 90 days is kind of the best roadmap that you should be that you should be going for. Um, you learn for the first 30 days. You start implementing and analyzing deals and starting developing relationships with capital partners for the next 30 days. And within 90 days, I'd be very surprised regardless of experience if you did not have a phenomenal um, investment under contract because I'm also providing you a whole list of active deals at all times, the same exact list, the only list that I am looking at to be able to buy and hold these real estate investments. Like I'm not doing, I'm not finding deals any other way than what I'm providing you, the way that I'm, I'm uh, then, then the list that I'm using to find deals at all times. Ideally in the future, I'm going to be able to implement that directly into the CRM. So those deals just are like presented into your CRM right away. But for right now, it's like literally, it's like a website that has all the deals that are active, all the creative deals, entry costs, terms, everything right there, exactly the way that I like the information presented so that you get the access to the exact same deals. And 
some people like because of like more limiting beliefs or certain mindset issues or like whatever it is, just because we're not trained this way, thankfully, sub, uh, pace is phenomenal and has, has changed our mindset on a lot of this stuff. But it's like it really is collaboration and they're like having an abundance mindset instead of scarcity. I'm definitely of the hundred plus deals a month. I'm definitely going to find my one to two a month. Everyone in here, if we have, if we have plenty, like there's just so many deals and everyone has a different buy, buy, uh, buy box. Not everyone is doing the exact same training or the same properties, the same strategies, the same locations. So there's more than enough deal flow for everyone. And the more successful we are as buyers, the more and more I can put, um, the more and more I can prioritize getting more and more wholesalers to to put in the time and effort. So because of the relationships I have with wholesalers, they're able to, they're putting the information the way that we like to view it. However, not every wholesaler is willing to do that. The more successful and competent buyers that we have within our community, the more and more deals that we're going to be able to leverage and say, hey guys, we have serious buyers, not people who are saying, send me your email, send me the deal, who are not wasting your time. They will put that deal in the format that the, those deals in the format that we like, and we'll just continue growing this list to a hundred deals active. 150, 200 plus deals active at all times. So there is no shortage of great investment opportunities for you to buy, depending on your strategies. Any last minute questions? Yes. So Andrea, yes, it is a, um, so I have my own go high level. It's, it's my own branded one. I pay the premium price so then I can share it with you all for free. We have access to the recording. So Adriana, you'll have access to all the trainings. As soon as you pay, it's already there. I don't, nothing is behind a paywall once you, as soon as you sign up, literally everything is there right away. Asked about the recordings. Yes, that's immediately there. Andrea, the CRM. Yes, it's a white labeled version of Go High Level. It's my custom CRM that I use in my business. It's not something, the problem with CRMs is a lot of people put together CRMs to sell to other people. Mine's very different. It's the CRM that I built, customized for my business, for raising money, for keeping track of all my deals and for lending money out. And I just give you all access to it for free. No one else is doing that. You're going to have to wait a little bit because there's so many people joining, especially this month. So in December, we'll start again, my integrator start coordinating with you to set you up on the CRM right now, spend the next 30 days, just learning and learning and learning as much as possible. Give yourself that 90 day window, learn for the next 30, first 30 days, start implementing and taking action. The next 30 days, getting the CRM onboarded, raising, starting to raise money and talking to people. And then um, the next 30 days, it's like, okay, go time, get your deals under contract, hit the new year running. A lot of people are going to wait and have these grand new year's resolutions of wanting to buy and hold real estate. And they're going to own, you know, they're going to have $10,000 of cash flow or $20,000 of cash flow by the end of the year, but they're going to wait until January 1st, start taking action. You're going to be already at a two, one and a half to two month head start. You're already going to be buying deals by the time the first of the year starts, if not sooner, depending on your experience and the level of action you, you put in. Like I mentioned, Birdie, for example, her and her husband, David are massive action takers within six weeks. They found a deal. We structured it. They we determine how much capital raised, they raise the money and they close on it within six weeks. So it's possible to do it, but it just depends on how much effort you put in. I can't force you to take action. I can just provide you the most comprehensive, detailed, like amazing training that I wish I had two years ago. It would have saved me a lot of time and, and heartache. If if I had that, I, I, I already did an amazing job of buying over $18 million of real estate in the last two years. I don't even want to know what I would have done if I had this information two years ago. Sadrani, yeah, you pay, you get immediate access. Lorraine asked, I'm a student with Host Camp. What would you say is the difference between your program and theirs? So I have really phenomenal relationships with wholesalers because I provide a lot of value to, to wholesalers and I am actually buying their deals quite often. So we get much better um, uh, deal access. Uh, we get much more deal access. It's not a few deals drip, dripped and dropped here and there. As you know, I'm an educator in Rob's Host Camp. I love Rob. I, I love everything that he does, but my thing is primarily for the buy and hold investor who wants to be a master at deal and deal analysis, having a systemized and, and like a straightforward and efficient way of getting deals, raising the money for those deals. And then the whole process of the whole buy and hold process. I mean, Lorraine, you're in host camp. Is that what you're getting? I don't, I'm not saying anything negative, but is that what you're getting? Mine's that's what mine is offering. I'll tell you right now, mine is much more comprehensive and much more focused on specifically buying and holding real estate for all management strategies. Does that mean I can compete at all with Rob on managing a short-term rental? No. Kills it. Phenomenal. No one better. However, I just outsource that. 
If I need a designer, I'll pay a designer. I don't need to know how to design a damn property. That's not helping me buy more real estate. If I need to manage my property, I'm not going to buy a job for myself. I'm not going to buy a, a, a property that I have to sit there and manage. Otherwise it won't work. That's not worth my time. My time is worth raising money, finding great deals, closing on them, financial freedom through passive income and getting a bunch of massive wealth along that way. So you answer that for yourself and you decide if it's the right fit for you is all I can say. I'm not comparing or contrasting. I'm just sharing what mine offers. And it's much more inclusive than just short-term rentals, for example. Especially the money. I mean, like if you haven't already under, like the capital raising is so insane. Raising money to buy and hold properties, you're buying and holding real estate using none of your own money. You cannot ask for... Um, anything better. I mean, I can't even like you're building financial freedom and generating massive wealth and other people are funding those deals because you're providing them great investment opportunities. Like it, it, you can't get better than that. All right, y'all any last second questions? Cause I'm about to wrap it up dinner time. Got to go kiss my baby. Oh, Patty, you joined. I'm so excited. Thank you. That is amazing. You're awesome. And I, I knew you'd be a phenomenal fit. So thank you so much. Um, remember, if you're in sub two, this is not a replacement, not at all. This is a compliment to everything you are learning. And this is just a nut additional value add um, in addition to what you're to what you're learning sub two. This is not everything included in sub two. This is just a very, this is a very, this is more straightforward version of how to buy and hold real estate, maximize returns, minimize risk, and raise the money to do so. And then do that over and over and over again. Like I said, if you want to go learn RV parks, I'm not your guy. Go fix and flip. Cool. Do that with someone else. Wholesale, pff, have fun. Like, I don't want to do any of that. And I don't want to teach other people how to do that. Because if your goal is true financial freedom, this is the way to do so. There's really no other way to do it. Thank you, y'all. All right. I appreciate you. And if you liked this, even if you joined, I'm doing three more uh, master classes. This one is broad. There's going to be a lot more specific and tactical in the next three. We're focusing on mastering deal analysis. For buying home investing, we're focusing on um, yes, Justin Moore. Look at you. Um, so mastering deal analysis, having that great deal flow and how I'm getting my deals, and then um capital raising. Thank you, brother. All right, remember if you sign up, I'm giving you all those extra bonuses. All right, y'all. Thank you. Seriously appreciate you. I can't believe we had the majority of people. Five birds, baby. Thank you, Jennifer. I cannot believe that we've had the majority of people stay on this call this whole time, even as I got into the pitching phase. You guys are incredible. Thank you. And I'm so excited to, do, to be part of this journey with you all. Like, seriously, I cannot wait to see what you guys do. Because like I said, two years are going to come and go either way. You decide if you want to be financially free in two years or not. Thank you, guys. Have a phenomenal night.